My Balls was the first Your Favorite Martian video released on January 26, 2011. A month later, it had 9.5 million views with a like ratio of 89%. As of writing, it has 31.5 million views with a like ratio of 91%. This was a really good premiere for his series. It encapsulated a lighthearted version of the brand of humor that Ray William Johnson was known for in his popular Equals 3 show. I still remember seeing those teasers leading up to this on his Facebook page at the time. We all wondered what the heck could be hiding behind all those silhouettes. The 3, 2, 1 revealed nature of it made it much more exciting when their faces finally became visible. The video itself has no message, unless you want to count talking about how big your balls are. The first little while of Your Favorite Martian felt like a fun attempt at parodying the life of an adult nerd with a dumb sense of humor. It's what I really admired about this project as a whole. The animation and music may be cheap, but charmingly so. I wouldn't have it any other way. Overall, I like my balls. I like them a lot. Zombie Love Song was the second Your Favorite Martian video released on February 9th, 2011. A month later, it had 9 million views with a like ratio of 94%. As of writing, it has 31.7 million views with a like ratio of 95%. This second video was yet another love letter to nerd culture, but this time with actual love. A guy with romantic interest for a girl online begins using various zombie puns to get her attention. When he turns out to actually be a zombie, the girl is terrified until she passes out. So he, uh, he steals her, kisses her, and now she's a zombie too. It's weird, the concept is a little bare, but it's fun. No harm with this one. Bottles of Beer was the third Your Favorite Martian video released on February 23rd, 2011. A month later, it had 4.6 million views with a like ratio of 87%. As of writing, it has 13.1 million views with a like ratio of 89%. This one takes more of a storytelling approach as you follow the events of some dude with a magic hat and a shirt with a red stripe. For the moments where it isn't focused on the lead singer Humbert, it uses a stickman aesthetic, probably to more distinctly separate the band from the story being told. It's full of beer puns, which you'd expect for a parody of the famous Bottles of Beer song. It takes some cues from their first video with the random animated characters for their chorus, pulling some dance moves. This one is more in line with partygoers, no doubt. It embraces that atmosphere with the strange series of events. Club Villain was the fourth Your Favorite Martian video released on March 9th, 2011. A month later, it had 8.5 million views with a like ratio of 95%. As of writing, it has 27.1 million views, with an unchanged like ratio. Club Villain is more like bottles of beer in how it tells a story and uses a different animated style to convey it. Humbert sings about how he once went to this club that was full of iconic fictional villains that he partied with, until he finds Poison Ivy, where his goal now is to pursue her and eventually... bang. I really like the electronic feel of this one, even if I do think part of it is trying to cover up Ray's not-so-incredible vocals. Don't get me wrong, Ray can do that kind of hip-hop thing and get away with it, but when he's required to flex his notes, it doesn't seem like he has quite the right training for it, which I'm sure he didn't. No matter, really, when it's just a video about Humbert getting drunk with some villains. Out ass. The Stereotype Song was the fifth Your Favorite Martian video released on March 23rd, 2011. A month later, it had 10.5 million views with a like ratio of 87%. As of writing, it has 39.4 million views with a like ratio of 90%. It's more like a stand-up routine of Ray's where he comes up with a bunch of stereotypes and throws them all in one barrel. Except Canada, which was left out for some reason. In the chorus, there's a seizure-inducing moment, which is probably not the best thing to have in your music video. The song's bridge features Humbert mocking Scotsmen for humping sheep, which goes on for slightly longer than 30 seconds. The song tries to poke fun at everyone, so it's not offensive, really. The jabs aren't too intense, maybe a little insensitive, but it's fine. Japanese the Smithers Love Song was the sixth Your Favorite Martian video released on April 6th, 2011. A month later, it had 6.9 million views. Nice. With a like ratio of 73%. As of writing, it has 14 million views with a like ratio of 78%. This was the first video in the series people looked at as bad even when it came out. It focuses on Smithers doing everything to keep Mr. Burns happy even if it costs him, but has some underlying themes of forcing a relationship between the two. There are also some unusually graphic concepts, which makes this an uncomfortable listen. I mean, it has a doggy-style joke, what? And, you can make relations in this little helper style. and what is this even doing as a Your Favorite Martian video? A dedicated Simpsons parody? This was the first and also last time they carried an entire song off of one existing property. Likely for the best. 
I get the idea it's just a parody and it can be absurd for the heck of it, but that isn't exempt from critique and as far as these things go, it's just unusual. Orphan Tears was the seventh Your Favorite Martian video released on April 20th, 2011. A month later, it had 9.8 million views with a like ratio of 90%. As of writing, it has 39.4 million views with a like ratio of 93%. Introducing in-video captions, yeah, we all love those. I'm just gonna go ahead and blur those out now. Orphan Tears was the first of a few videos to feature a guest singer, this time being one Ray had connections with, Wax in particular, who prior to this made a song called Stalk in Your Mom that Ray would often play in his Equals 3 outros after he introduced a forum question from the previous week. Regardless, Orphan Tears is about the crew, who this time were not being represented by a different art style. This is intended as the focus is now for the members of the band to actually be going through this strange experience themselves once someone brings in a bottle of Orphan Tears, which are supposedly hallucinogenics. No further explanation is given. This is a praise track for your favorite Martian standards, and one which most remember when reflecting on the series. It performed well due to its bizarre concept, humor that was acute with Ray's show, One guy goes to throw up in the bathroom, but he can't because the toilet bowl calls him a homo. Mr. Douchebag was the 8th Your Favorite Martian video released on May 4th, 2011. A month later, it had 7.7 .7 million views with a like ratio of 56%. As of writing, it has 25.1 million views with a like ratio of 66%. I still remember how much people hated this one back then. At the time, I'd watch these things as soon as they were published. This time, it wasn't long until the like bar proved that, yeah, people weren't impressed. Why is that? I can only speculate, really. Since back then, all I remember hearing people say was that it sucked, and I thought so too. The chorus is lazy and annoying, not to mention pitch shifted. You could say every video so far had a brand of creativity to it, even if they weren't that great, but this one feels more like an indirect jab at certain people. The concept is that there's a douchebag. Do douchebag. Do 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 douchebag. He does douchebag things. They point out these things and laugh at him in the form of a song. Towards the end, it relies on DJ to grind in certain douchebag concepts which, again, feel like an indirect jab at someone. It kind of fits with modern meme material, so I can see why it's made somewhat of a resurgence. You're a douchebag! Dou douchebag! Transphobic Techno, no, I didn't read that wrong, was the ninth Your Favorite Martian video released on May 18th, 2011. A month later, it had 7.1 million views with a like ratio of 59%. As of writing, it has 17.3 million views, with a like ratio of 64%. Jeez, I'm surprised that ratio's increased at all. Yeah, as if their last video wasn't controversial enough. I don't know why they didn't save this one for later after their previous flop, but it's more questionable why they even decided to make this in the first place. I remember the original title was Bitch Got a Penis, but they changed it a short while after to Transphobic Techno, as if this replacement title was any better. In fact, it's much worse. My guess is that YouTube didn't want something called Bitch Got a Penis showing up on their home screen. Whatever, the rename never stopped it from being age-restricted. So in this one, the DJ is going to parties, meeting up with girls, who he then engages in sexual contact with. For each of the three girls he sees, they eventually reveal their undergarments where there exists a bulge. Ooh woo. He's quickly traumatized by these events, which lands him in a mental institution. The weird thing to me about this video is that it didn't really need to be transphobic. This idea could have been portrayed in so many different ways, but I guess they chose this because traps are funny, I guess. It's a crude take on a sensitive topic, which was kind of the thing in the late 2000s to early 2010s. Still, transphobic techno's sense of humor feels outdated even at this point. Oh, and the song isn't good either. It sounds like Nicki Minaj's Pound the Alarm, but only if she kept pounding that alarm while a pitch-shifted Ray William Johnson shouts Bitch Got a Penis over and over. Bitch Got a Penis. Bitch Got a- Grandma Got a Facebook was the 10th Your Favorite Martian video released on June 1st, 2011. A month later, it had 11.4 million views with a like ratio of 86%. As of writing, it has 26.7 million views with a like ratio of 89%. This one had to do a pretty good job to make up for the last two, which I guess it did? It gives off a feel more representative of the earlier videos, which is what people were wanting from them, I think. I just don't think it's a great Your Favorite Martian video per se. The whole thing is pretty much summed up by the first sentence. Grandma's got a Facebook, now she's hitting on my friend! It elaborates that Grandpa passed away and now Grandma is lonely, so she's resorting to the only other people she knows, and those are Humbert's friends. Humbert's friends happen to be mostly superheroes and stereotype figures from two earlier videos. 
Granted, these were being posted every two weeks, I wouldn't blame Ladybug for reusing some assets. But yeah, I don't know how I feel about this one overall. It once again leans on a bit of an uncomfortable side, going as far as to have Grandma rename herself on Facebook to Slutty McButt Sex. This was Ray's brand of humor, so maybe you could excuse it, but the earlier episodes of Your Favorite Martian felt a lot less... sleazy? Those videos had adult concepts, but they never felt anywhere near as edgy as many forthcoming videos would lean towards. Oh yeah, this is the first one to show credits at the end of the video. I'm not sure why it took this long, but there they are. Wrinkly ass. Wrinkly ass. Tiggle Biddies was the 11th Your Favorite Martian video released on June 15th, 2011. A month later, it had 13.6 million views with a like ratio of 90%. As of writing, it has 47.5 million views with a like ratio of 91%. Tiggle Biddies is like a reverse of my balls. Instead of Ray's testicles, it's all about them titties. A lot of the ball gags from the last one are... Ball gags? <clears throat> the spherical-based humor is brought back from my balls. It's the most popular video on their channel, because of course it is. Once again, they used a unique art style to follow the events of a story. But now, for the second time in the series' history after Orphan Tears, it's in the context of the band members again. Slightly different this time, though, as they're portrayed being high schoolers. Upon starting the new year, they're curious about what new girls have shown up so they can fantasize over their boobies. This one has an electronic beat again, with a chorus that I actually really like. It's a repeating line, but works this time because it's not do 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 douchebag you feel? Humbert asks the girl to prom, who accepts. It turns out she doesn't actually have big boobs, though. She just boosted her chest with tissues. Humbert begins to tit-shame her. She cries. That's very funny. I do really like how they foreshadowed this in its own chorus with the last Tiggle Biddies being a quickly dropped fake old Biddies line. <laughs> this one is really creative, and I admire it a lot for that, even if the shaming part feels unusually cruel, and even back then I wasn't really okay with it. Very funny. Fight to Win was the 12th Your Favorite Martian video released on June 29th, 2011. A month later, it had 7.5 million views with a like ratio of 90%. As of writing, it has 21 million views with a like ratio of 92%. This is the second video to feature a guest singer. This time it's... Daystorm? I have no idea how to pronounce this. Daystorm. 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 Oh my god, no! Do not cross the art styles in the same room! What the heck were they going for here? Why did they need to have a cartoonishly realistic representation of Deathstorm and everyone else's traditional brand identity, I guess? I mean, you mean to tell me that Humbert isn't enough brand identity for Ray William Johnson? <sighs> okay, I guess we're going with this. Humbert and Deathstorm are playing Mortal Kombat, or similar. Ray mispronounces Ryu. First came right! who performs a hurricane kick, yelling Hadouken. This is the incorrect attack. The two fight various famous characters from video game history while enjoying a bowl of chips. There's just one chip left, and now Arthur's pissed. Stock and Your Mom was the 13th Your Favorite Martian video released on July 13th, 2011. A month later, it had 8.2 million views with a like ratio of 83%. As of writing, it has 22 million views with a like ratio of 86%. Remember how we mentioned Wax's stock in your mom earlier? Well, Ray brings him back in this one to do some of those verses, but Ray will be taking over on most of them for a Your Favorite Martian release. No idea why they did this. I guess they couldn't come up with something original that week? It's yet another example of using a different art style in the context of a story being told. So, this dude is stalking your mom. Nothing personal, kid. The lyrics suggest creative ways in which this creep stalks your mom. In summary, that's all this is. I'm not much of a fan of the art style this time around. The backgrounds in particular are simple and scenes were reused often. My summary, this is a filler video to keep up with the schedule. After it first came out, I completely forgot about it and only in instances like this do I even remember it exists. It fits more in Wax's slightly different brand of humor than Ray's, which is fine on its own, but in this instance, it just isn't your favorite Martian, so feels more like a product than a passionate new video. Sometimes I stay in my bathroom for days. Robot Bar Fight was the 14th Your Favorite Martian video released on July 27th, 2011. A month later, it had 6.6 .6 million views with a like ratio of 88%. As of writing, it has 16.1 million views with a like ratio of 90%. I'm kinda sad this one gets so little attention because in my opinion, it's one of the best. It's pretty much a redo of Club Villain, and whichever one's better is entirely up to you. 
Personally, I have more of a relation to these robot characters than any of the villains in Club Villain, so it's more akin for me to like this one over that one, but I will admit Club Villain has a bit more personality to it. The electronic beat is awesome, the references are fun, the style is good, and to top off that earlier favorite Martian charm, the humor is safe and lighthearted. No unnecessary vocals from DJ, no weird bridges, just a solid video overall. Maybe the reason nobody talks about this one is because there's not really too much to say about it. Just a lot of fun. 8-Bit World was the 15th Your Favorite Martian video released on August 10th, 2011. A month later, it had 8.9 million views with a like ratio of 89%. As of writing, it has 18.7 million views with a like ratio of 91%. This should be my favorite Your Favorite Martian video, but it's not. It starts alright, until it becomes this weird, like, motivational speech. I'm not even sure what the message is here. So then we've got Hoodie Allen, who really embraces the rap of this piece. At the very end, we see Humbert fall into the Abyss Toy Story 2 style, and I can't help but feel this was symbolism on Ladybug's end. This was, after all, their last video with Ray. He was moving on to use Cosmic Toast Studios. Ladybug made 15 for them in total, so I assume this was a planned package that expired with 8-Bit World, as he didn't renew on Ladybug's end. So that's how I feel about the first generation of Your Favorite Martian, one full decade later. I think the first time I addressed these videos, I didn't do so in a way that appropriately got my feelings across. I loved Your Favorite Martian, which is why it was so hard to see them have so many failures as they kept going. I blame the forced schedule. A lot of these could have either been written better, or animated better. It was all such a rush to be consistently relevant. But in the case of music and animation, I really don't feel that was necessary. It's a different industry from his Equals 3 show. And given the affiliation to Equals 3, these always would have been popular regardless. Your Favorite Martian deserved more slack than what it had. Though I want to say it's not really about the wobbly animation errors, the occasional poorly vocalized verse. It was about the tone that they set with the first couple episodes. An adult but lightheartedly so adventure of three dudes in a band talking about their nerdy lives. I can't be wrong in thinking that's what the intention was at the start, expiring Ladybug and employing Cosmic Toast. There's gonna be a lot less of that charm. In fact, I couldn't blame you for thinking what your favorite Martian once was had been completely lost by the time Puppet Breakup came out. We'll be covering them all in the next video, so be sure to subscribe for more Your Favorite Martian.